To create an event on Action Network, we'll go to the Start Organizing menu and select Events. First, we'll give our event a name that the public and all our activists will see. For this, we'll call it the Action Network Ice Cream Party. Above that, here, you'll see an administrative title. Only administrators and organizers within this group will be able to see the administrative title, and it makes internal organizing easier. For example, if we have an ice cream party twice a month, we can call this August Ice Cream Party 2. Below the title of our event, you'll see these two checkboxes. The first checkbox is for an event that has an end time. For example, if you're having a volunteer meeting, happy hour, or a teach-in, those events will probably only last a couple of hours. But if your event is a large march or a day of action, it may not have an end time. Since this event is an ice cream party, I'll check yes. The next checkbox here indicates if your event has a physical location. This is helpful if you're hosting a webinar or a conference call, since you probably won't have a physical location for your activists to go to. Since this event is an ice cream party, it does have a physical location, so we won't check this box. Next, here, we'll fill out the start date and time of our event. Then, we'll say the end time. Then, we'll put in the location of our event. This is the location name, so we'll put in the actual name of where our event will be at, like a local restaurant, school, or a volunteer's house. In the next box to the right, we'll type in the physical address. You'll want to put a real address in here, not something like the corner of Main Street and 19th Avenue. This way, we can show a map and the location of your event on your event page. Remember that this events tool is for one-time events. If you want to make a series of events, like rallies all across your state, you'll want to use our events campaign tool. For more information about that, watch the events campaign's video tutorial at health.actionnetwork.org. Next, you have the option to put in host contact information here, like a phone number or an email address. We make this optional because some people don't want their personal contact information out there in the public but providing that information is really helpful for allowing attendees to get in touch with you directly when needed. If you don't put any sort of contact information here, your attendees will only be able to reach you using the events discussion board, which we'll get to later. You can then add a banner image if you'd like. As always, we'll provide size guidelines to make sure that the image fits the page. The next section here is for the event description. This is where you'll tell people what this event is all about, what will be happening at the event, and why they should come. Like all our actions, you can use this formatting toolbar to customize the appearance of your page. You can do it in HTML code, format headings, Align your text to the left, center, right, or justify. Bold, italicize, or strike through your text. Add bulleted or numbered lists. Add an image, video, or table. Add links or hyperlinks. And add a horizontal line roll. Next thing we need to do is in the attribution center here. We need to indicate whose event this is and know where the data is going. In most cases, you'll want that to be your group. This means that all the data you collect from activists in this event will go directly on your group's list. So you'll select the group from the drop-down menu, if you'd rather show yourself as an individual as the creator of this event, 
keep this add or remove creator here on the left. I want all this information to go directly to my group, so I'll go ahead and remove myself. I can always add it back later. For more information on groups and attributions, check out our group's video tutorial at help.actionnetwork.org. At the bottom here, you'll see this maximum number of attendees. You should fill this out if your event has a limited amount of space. We'll stop collecting RSVPs once you hit this limit, and activists who try to sign up will receive a message receiving that this event is at capacity, and they won't be able to RSVP. If you don't want to set a limit, just leave it blank. On the right, up here, you'll see the sidebar and the goal slider. Sometimes, the goal slider doesn't make a lot of sense for smaller events or events with a limited capacity, so I'll keep it off for now. But you can always go back and add or remove it if you'd like. As always, it will start at 25 RSVPs and increase as you gather more so that you're always showing positive momentum. Below that, you'll see our standard RSVP form. We'll ask for first name, last name, email address, and zip code, but only email address is required. You can change what's required and even remove these aspects by clicking the required checkbox or removing it altogether. You can also ask for other information, like a checkbox for volunteering or childcare, or a text box for phone numbers or additional requests. For that, use this Add or Edit Additional Questions button, which will bring you to our Easy to Use Form Builder. For more information on that, watch our Common Action Concepts video at help.actionnetwork.org. Above that, you'll see a checkbox that will let attendees bring guests. If you check this, then the text box at the bottom of the form will let activists input the number of guests that they're bringing, right here. When you're done creating the form, you have a couple of options. You can save and preview what you have so far by clicking this green button or sending this private preview link to another volunteer, supervisor, or coworker. You can also save and go to the next step by clicking this blue button, which is what we'll go ahead and do. This brings us to the thank you page. Here, in instructions, you'll give your attendees instructions that they'll see after the RSVP. This can tell them what to wear, where to meet, or to park, or how to get to the location. Once you're done with the instruction, Once you're all done with the instructions, you can preview the event again, save it as a draft, or save and publish. We'll go ahead and save and publish our event. That brings us to our Action Manage page. Our event is now live, so we can go to View Event to see what it looks like. This brings us to our Live Action page. You'll see that everything is in the same format and layout as on the Creation page and we've added a map of the exact location. Back on our Action Manage page, you have the option to view, to view event statistics, download RSVPs for your event, review the event info, and more. We have a lot of options for customizing how people will interact with our event and what happens after they RSVP. To learn more about customizing the email people will get after RSVPing, or how to embed the event on your own website, what statistics we track for you, and more, please watch our Common Action Concepts video at help.actionnetwork.org. One important feature on the events tool is the discussion board here. The event discussion board is kind of like a Facebook wall where people can post questions or comments about the event. Things like, what's the parking situation? Or how can I get there with public transportation? You'll get the option to respond, and attendees will get an email notification. You can also enable or disable the discussion board by toggling this button here. Your attendees will also automatically get an email if the event, date, time, or location changes. Your attendees can opt out of this notification if they'd like. A few tabs over, you can also change the response options. Like all our actions, you can change the thank you redirect link 
and the unpublished redirect link, and the auto-response email. There's a few more clips in the auto-response email, so feel free to input your own information if you'd like. We'll also send out 24-hour reminders before the event. If you'd rather not do that, you can uncheck this box here. You can also check this box if you'd like to get an email every time someone RSVPs. Just type the email address in here. Make sure that when you're done adjusting your response options, click this blue Save Response Options button. If you still have any questions about creating an event or any of our other tools on Action Network, please visit help.actionnetwork.org.